Hey everybody, so welcome to the Summer 2024 Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase where I review some of the new tools out there in the Knowledge Graph space. I do this completely on my own. I have no relationship with any of the companies that I review. I get no sponsorships, I get no kickbacks, I get nothing. Uh, I do this because I like to see what new tools are out there and see what they're all about. And it seems like all of you appreciate being able to also see those uh, and not necessarily have to reach out to the salespeople right away or get more of a biased view from the vendor themselves. And I forgot to film which tool we are going to be reviewing today. So that one, that's the one that we're going to be reviewing today. If you're wondering where I am, there's another video coming on that soon. Uh, but also make sure you stick around to the very end of the video because my honest review is written up at the very end and throughout the whole process, I ask questions as we go and hopefully that helped you if you're interested in this. If not, at least it's entertaining, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, let's go get started. Um, my name is Ryan Oates. Uh, I'm the CTO and one of the founders of Kobai. Um, we've been you know, around for a few years, um, focused really on how we can apply sort of semantic layer and knowledge graph technology for enterprises. You know, a lot of folks are talking about that. What makes you folks so special in that space? Sure. So, you know, maybe unlike some of the other players in the knowledge graph world, Kobai didn't start as a graph database. Mm. Um, you know, we, you know, me and my co-founder came from a, a large company industrial background where we saw, you know, a lot of investment in AI, a lot of investment in machine learning, and we're struck by the difficulty really executing on the so what, right? Mm -hmm. I have insight that like a jet engine is going to fail soon. Yeah. Or, you know, some some very specific outcome uh, mm -hmm. is likely to happen. And we really struggled with, well, what do I do about that? Mm -hmm. How do I make a decision? Um, and it's surprising how far the the context needed to make that decision goes, right? If something yeah. needs to be fixed, dot, 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 what's the vacation schedule of the technicians that are certified uh -huh. to replace that part, <laughs> yeah. right? It, um, yeah. it, it really is broad. So we found that the most interesting challenges that complex companies were facing we're hyper cross-functional. Yeah. So we started with um, a workflow in mind. You know, mm -hmm. we wanted to directly engage subject matter experts in mm -hmm. whatever it is. We work a lot in the industrial space, mm -hmm. um, but we've also worked with restaurant chains and, and pharma mm -hmm. companies. So mm -hmm. um, we want to get those people directly engaged and just apply that knowledge graph technology that sometimes sits in a bit of a silo uh, and get yeah. it out there for people to use. And, yeah. And their needs. Well, I'm so glad to hear that too. And I mean, don't get me wrong, like a lot of, um, just pure database on, you know, with knowledge graph and, you know, even some of the other like bigger, fancier bells and whistles, you know, kind of applications that do um, things in the knowledge graph space. Yep. It all works on these connected networks of things. And, you know, it, you can use it for anything. But I think what you're really highlighting here is like the multi-team um, it's almost like event modeling, right? Like, okay, well, this event may or may not happen. And if it did, how do we mitigate that that risk? Well, you got to have the technicians. You have to have the parts on hand. You need to have, you know, the special oil or whatever it might be. Sure. And if you don't have those things that you, you can predict as much as you want that thing's going to happen, but you have no idea what to do when it happens, right? So I, I really do appreciate that you had that thoughtfulness in mind when you were developing this because that's helpful. Some of our competitors will talk about the complexity of a challenge. And when you drill down, they're talking about like, we have 300 database connectors to connect to wherever your data is. Mm -hmm. To us, the more interesting complexity is what happens if I need five world-class experts in different fields to collaborate yeah. around the solution? You know, I need yeah. my operations, my supply chain, yeah. you know, whatever it is. Um, and we try and provide a tool to get those people engaged. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's, that's very much needed in this space um, with like IOT and digital twins and like a lot of that stuff that shows yeah. up in supply chain and manufacturing. And I mean, that's certainly not the end of the list for sure. Uh, like we'll get hospital um, data. Like you got, you got some supply chain stuff in there. You have some manufacturing, like, so there's like these elements that show up in, in other use cases outside of these like dedicated ones. Um, at the beginning of, uh, of 2022, I guess we released uh Kobi Saturn, which is our graph database, um, which I think is the only one that runs on top of Lakehouse. So we support um, Databricks or Snowflake as a backend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you get the separation of compute and the mm -hmm. cheap storage, the elastic scalability. Mm -hmm. um, 
And so that provides a lot of opportunities, especially in those big companies with a lot of data. Yeah. Um, do some interesting things with graphs. Yeah. I mean, and but, you know, even highlighting some of the things you were talking about, like you can't put everything in. I think a lot of folks, when they get into data fabric, they're like, okay, put it all in. And, you know, there's also the cleaning and the, you know, yeah. normalization and all the other stuff that goes along with that. Um, and th that's one of the benefits of graph, right? Is, okay, build to the use case you have now. And yeah, keep the, the data somewhere and maybe, you know, start to clean it for the eventual, like maybe we need it. I mean, you know, you do that at your own discretion. But the beauty of graph, is, you know, unlike a, a relational database is you can keep extending the, the graph. You sure. can keep, you know, building out these use cases uh, without the monumental task of re reconfiguring all the tables and all the other things that went into the first use case. So I'm, I'm glad you're you're thinking of that and highlighting it. We have kind of two modules within the system. Uh, Kobai Studio is where I'm going to start. Um, that's very much where the the model building, you know, building what we call questions uh, happens. So I'll start there. Um, but we do have a kind of built-in visualization, and we can talk kind of why that's there and and kind of what the the use case for that is. Um, so jumping in, uh, you know, this is the the top um, sort of entry point for Kobai Studio. Uh, we call this the domains view. And so this is a, a high level look of the model that's been built so far. This is a demo environment. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's been built out a little bit. Um, and, you know, for people that are more familiar with ontology, a domain is, is just kind of a logical container that we've added to this. Yep. And, and there's a few benefits They're very pragmatic, right? One is just to keep your head from exploding, seeing the whole model on screen mm -hmm. at once. Um, yep. But the other is, is delegation of authority, right? Find mm -hmm. organizations will have like, a finance org and they have a, you know, we, we always say, don't give everyone in your org the ability yeah. to create the model, yeah. pick your subject matter experts, right? These people are going to be the stewards of that model. Um, and then you can, you can sort of apportion that out as, as appropriate. Um, so sometimes those domains are, you know, product lines, sometimes they're horizontal business functions like HR and sourcing. Um, this particular demo came from, uh, um, an oil and gas use case where mm -hmm. it, it actually got real cross-functional, right? They were looking at uh, industrial operations in the field. What's the utilization of drills and equipment? Mm -hmm. The really interesting part that came from that was how are my employees doing servicing this equipment? And mm -hmm. if I look at like the closure rates on work orders and the quality and, and how the equipment performed after the service was done, how do I compare that to the training they had? How long mm. they did the job? What job they had before that? Mm -hmm. Right, really interesting problem that they yeah. were struggling to solve. Um, and so you see things here like, you know, drilling, but you also see concepts of like education and and mm -hmm. you know, sources. And when we do this with the customer, you know, we we get their hands dirty immediately, right? So this starts with kind of a workout where we're saying, you know, what are the first? And this is to your point about starting incrementally. What are the first five or ten questions you want to answer? Yeah. What pieces of your world do you need to know something about? Mm -hmm. You know, I always encourage people like use the names, not based on any database you've seen, right? But mm -hmm. how do you talk about this in your team meeting? Yeah. Right? If you had a whiteboard marker in your hand right now and you're going to draw circles and lines to explain this, what would you do? Yeah. So um, if and I so could, are you helping the customer build out the ontology, or are they building out the ontology? What if they already have one? If they already have one, then we'll just bring that in okay. um, for sure. Um, you know, often our our startup with a customer will look like, you know, working with them, sort of training and project work concurrently for a couple of weeks. Then mm -hmm. we might offer office hours with them for a few months. But really, the whole point of the tool is to empower them to. Oh, to good. OK. Themselves. We're not okay. a professional services org. OK, awesome. So if I just if I click on one of these for, say, drilling, um, you know, these, we call it this level concepts, right? So this is like a class in an ontology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if I click on drill here, right? It has properties that define what a drill is, um, but it's also inheriting, right? So this drill is a drilling asset, right? It can be, you know, different types of things that it can inherit simultaneously. So um, there's this sort of asset class that they've defined that has things like name and serial number and uh, a relationship linked to status. Mm -hmm. uh, but then at the same time, it has things that are unique to drill. Right, it's connected to a compressor and an engine, and uh, and if you know it has an efficiency number, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And if I want to add one, that's as simple as hitting the add button. So this is the the incremental piece. You know, yeah. we'll see when we get to connecting to data and mapping to data sources. Yeah. That's incremental as well, right? Mm -hmm. Part of what we try and tell the customer, 
to your point about not bringing all your data, we're not going to turn the graph into a swamp, right? We're going <laughs> to drive it by the questions that we have. Let's just build yeah. enough of the ontology to answer those mm -hmm. and then repeat as necessary. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Um, so from there, I mean, and this is, you know, I, a quick exercise, right? To get through the enough of the model to start asking questions. If I go over to the questions tab, um, this is just a quick look, you know, this are each of the domains, sort of how many questions there are. If I come in here to like human resources and say, uh, you know, future months and current position or something, uh, here we go. So, um, you know, there's a question that's already been built, but actually let me, uh, you know, so there's a, I'm picking, what do you care about uh, from mm -hmm. the, the model, right? So mm -hmm. where the domains tab has all the concepts you've added, all the relationships, all the properties. Um, here, we've just narrowed down to like the particular concepts that I care about to answer this question. I come in here, employees by job position. And uh, from the model here, right, I will pick uh, human resources. So what have I got? I've got employees, add that. And, you know, we've got a lot of properties here. So uh, what did I care about? Well, I, I'll pull an employee ID. But uh, I assume I have a relationship here for their position. Yeah, is there a way to search through the properties? Because I can imagine scrolling down like this would get cumbersome if you have a ton of properties. It it does, and there isn't at this moment. But uh, that is absolutely coming. Okay. Um, you know, so I've picked a, a relationship property here that connects me to their position, and you know, it's just asking me, do you want a new instance of this? I do. Right. So it's going to add job position to my query. Mm -hmm. And if I come over to job position, oh, we probably have know, position ID. There we go. And uh, so if I come back and look at the whole question, um, at this point, you know, you can do things that you could really do in any query engine, right? So mm -hmm. uh, what did we say? We wanted to count up the employees by job position. So if I pick employee, I can very quickly say aggregates and I want to add a count. Mm-hmm. I could I could do max and min if I if I wanted to that sort of thing, um, and then if I, I had a mind to maybe I would say you know the job position I want to filter that by, you know and I can quickly build a, a nice nested and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, of conditions okay. including things that are dynamic right I can be prompted at runtime. Um, there's a few ways to consume it so three really um, one is we have our own built-in visualization. Mm -hmm. And so if you click the visualization tab, I can say, you know, I want to create a new visual for this and I want to turn it into a bar chart and we're going to mm -hmm. publish that to our, our dashboard. Um, the other way is, you know, one click API publishing. So if I click the API nice. button, spun up an endpoint here, I've got my secret key. So if I'm mm -hmm. a mobile developer or something and I want to drop this in, I can do that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the third way our, I mentioned our, our Kobai Saturn backend is built on top of um, Databricks or Snowflake. Mm -hmm. And so every time you build a query here, it's going to drop a view in that backend with the same name. Mm -hmm. and so, well, this is can be very powerful for, you know, maybe not our uh, our initial set of personas who are, you know, subject matter experts coming here to answer questions, but data scientists, you mm -hmm. know, we work with some organizations that use that to, to wrangle the data, make it very reusable. They mm -hmm. don't have the same 20 lines of Python at the top of every notebook. They can use Kobai questions to make a very understandable uh, integration of that okay. data. And then, you know, because it's sort of natively in that Lakehouse backend, loading it into a graph neural network or whatever you want to do is like two lines of code to just mm -hmm. load that view into a data frame and, and go. Nice. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the next step from here is, is connecting data to this. And, you know, we talked about the incremental nature of Kobai and we don't want to bring in all the data. And so that theme is, is carried through here. You'll notice that mapping is not a top level tab, right? Mm -hmm. To connect data sources. We drive that from the question, right? So I have this employees by job position question. Let's see if we have the data for it. So if I click on mapping, it's going to show me the three properties in the model that are used. And, you know, these gray boxes represent data sources that have been mapped to them. Mm -hmm. So our mapping approach looks a little different than, you know, maybe some others you've seen where it's, it's very atomic. It's property by property. So, mm -hmm. you know, employee ID could be mapped to five different databases, right? And we'll see companies that, you know, grow by uh, acquisition instead of doing an ERP integration, mm -hmm. they'll take the sources they inherit and map them independently to mm -hmm. integrate the data in the graph. Mm -hmm. so, How would this work though? If let's say I have five questions that I am developing all for some HR thing 
and all of them are going to have very similar mappings. Is there a way to kind of like clone something and just, oh. cause I, I'm just thinking like if I have yeah. a few different ones and they're all using the same mappings, but just like slight variations, it might get cumbersome to do those each one. So the map, the question process drives the, the sort of implementation of the mapping, but it's shared via the model. So if these mapping rules that are here where these have already been connected, have a little arrow that was done in a previous question. Oh, I see. This okay. Is, this is the new question we created. It's already mapped. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, what I would find though, if I had picked a property that didn't have any mappings is there'd be a little red flag on it says this question's never going to work because you don't have any data. <laughs> yeah, you have um, no data. You know, what would you like to do about that? In a way, then, I, I actually really like that because, you know, if you're just doing a traditional Sparkle query or any other kind of query on a graph, you don't, unless you run the query, you don't know if you actually have the data or as much data or the data is clean enough. Like there's a lot of yeah. um, unknowns when you're doing the ETL process. Um, so, so having some of that in here to tell you like, Hey, you just made this query. Uh, congratulations. You, you, you hit on something no one else has yet. <laughs> now right. you need to make sure right. it's, it's there. Right. Yep. And that's, you know, we've, uh, we have some partners that we've, we've worked with their, you know, traditional BI team and they've kind yeah. of moved part of their practice over to Kobai. And that's kind of an interesting learning moment for them coming through and saying, well, we, we don't have that. We've, we've driven, yeah. we've been driven by questions from users for this and, and we don't have that ready to give them. Yep. Nice. I want to, maybe I want to do another mapping here, right? I realize that this mapping uh, isn't bringing in all the employees I care about. Mm -hmm. So if I click on data sources, um, you know, I can, I can add, you know, sort of anything I can connect to with a JDBC driver. Um, mm -hmm. We support arbitrary APIs, including our own, um, mm -hmm. you know, the perennial favorite flat files in a cloud store. <laughs> um, and then, you know, the upload button is just the, the darling of the data scientist, right? Who has a data source that they want to upload and, and try out. So um, I might pick one here, like, uh, you know, all candidates and uh, I can pick this data source and I can do a, a quick preview here just so as the mapper, I understand what I'm looking at. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. And then when I come back to map this thing, let me just add a employee ID. Um, it's going to ask me, you know, do I want to just take it directly out? Do I want to do a function on it? Right. Can mm -hmm, mm -hmm. split the data, vary mm -hmm. things. Um, I'm going to pick that all candidates set. And then I have an employee ID. So I don't know, worker ID seems logical, right? I'm going to pick sort of where I want the value for employee ID, mm -hmm. uh, pick that. And then next is, okay, great. That's the employee ID. How do you want to uniquely identify the employee, mm -hmm. right? So maybe I picked an identifier. They're going to be the same thing, right? Mm -hmm. But if this mm -hmm. had been higher date, the concept identifier would still yep. have been employee ID at this point. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you can put in filters here. Right. We have the ability to say like, oh, I want to filter out this company code or I want to, you know, drop this data or not this other data as mm -hmm. I do this process. So, um, you know, for us, there's a combination. You talked about cleansing um, between stuff that we'll simply do in the tool. Mm -hmm. um, but, I mean, we certainly have customers that have deeper cleansing needs than that. that yeah. And that's where I was going with it. I, it sounds yeah. like, you know, if so ETL processes get very crazy, very fast. So I'm assuming sure. like if somebody already has a lot of work going on you know, they can continue to use that. And then yeah. um, it would get just picked up here as a more cleansed, <clears throat> although you can still do some cleansing here, um, data set. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good to know. And so this is, this is where Kobai Tower comes in, where, you know, every one of these cards now is a, a question uh, mm -hmm. that we built in the backend, right? And if I have the permissions, you know, total number of employees, pretty simple question or headcount by gender. If I open this, I can see it, but I can also now explain it to the person that I'm looking at it with. Yeah. Here's what the ontology behind this looks like. Yeah. Here, here's how I put it together. Um, you know, there's always that question of showing it to a vice president who doesn't believe the answer. Uh, <laughs> and so we try and we try and help with that. Um, so, you know, a quick way to sort of put together um, related, uh, related questions, you know, any kind of filters that you build into these while you're building them. Kobai will kind of pull those out at the top so I could very mm -hmm. quickly go and filter this by country uh, if that's what I wanted to do. And and often, you know, our, we can sort of leave it to the customers on how they want to bucketize this. Often yeah. that goes by persona, right? Yeah. I might have a, a human resources tab or a, a management tab. That's what mm -hmm. Yeah, I like this too because, um, well, if you have Tableau, why not? How many people are building the ontology and Tableau reports? Very few. Sure. Um, so sometimes it's like pulling teeth to try to show the outputs of 
your your ontology and the data that is then you know being walked with your graph, um, this is a good way to at least have that um, set up, which which I I do appreciate because there's so many times that um, again this is just missed in a lot of even like the really big databases that are out there for graph, right. and I'm like sorry, can't use it because this is important if you don't have an army of ontologists or an army of data engineers or knowledge graph engineers or or what have you. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm glad that this exists. It's, it's um, you know, for us, a big element to this as well is, is reuse. Yeah. Um, you know, it is the classic problem of, you know, uh, I build something really interesting this month and, you know, it takes some time, but um you know, everyone is so thrilled with it that next month they want me to extend it by 10%. And if that's an implemented in Python or Sparkle or something, mm -hmm. um, it can be very, you know, my question to customers is always, well, if you want to extend it by 10%, is that 10% more work or 110% more work? Yeah. Like, are you going and unpacking what you built before? And yeah. so kind of one job one for Kobai has been, let's expose it, right? Uh, any yeah. other subject matter expert from your org ought to be able to come in and look at this and understand yeah. immediately what's been done. And, and take it a step further. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's always been a trend of, you know, how do I cut back on SQL, Sparkle, Python yeah. rework? Yeah. Um, and we see it actually becoming even more relevant as people are starting to use this kind of stuff for generative AI, right? There's this yeah. tendency to say, um, I have a question. And even if the, the magic black box, right, I'm being a bit <laughs> facetious, right? But it comes yeah. up with an answer. And in an enterprise context, I need to validate that answer. Yep. Right? It was super fast to get, but it's real world work to figure out if that's actually valid, right? So yeah. I do whatever I do, I, yep. I cross check, I, I I figure that out. Yeah. And then the question is, everyone's so happy with it. They asked me to extend the question by 10%. Um, I don't really have any sense for how that answer was arrived at. Right? Yeah. So yeah. that's to, to us, that's where we're pursuing sort of generative AI that's grounded in the ontology. So exactly. We can literally show you, here's what we did in the graph to answer this question. And so if yeah. you want to go by 10%, you can do 10% more validation, not start over because you don't know how this. Yeah. Uh, and then, I mean, that's, that's the whole, like being grounded with, you know, RAG applications from your LLM and, you know, it doesn't fix the issue where, you know, your LLM is still, you know, a black box blender of all the data. So, you know, yeah. you're, you're not always going to get the same answer twice, uh, but you can at least then ground it on, is this the correct for your business um, answer? So that that's at least the part that that comes into play here, which is which is incredibly helpful. Sure. But yeah, I mean, that's that's why so many people are, you know, in the LLM space that are looking into the graph space now because of, of a lot of this. So it's good that, that you're keeping that in mind as anybody doing anything graph nowadays has to keep in mind. Yeah. You know, the the to the extent that an ontology is a way to describe information in the terms that humans yeah. use. That's just a natural dovetail with the concept of an LLM. Exactly. And yeah. It's, it's, it, and it's giving that um, missing link context, right? Like, okay, yes. for some reason, these two departments always work together. Why is that? Well, there's some historical database they all used to use and therefore they just have like a lot of commonalities, even though that database might not even exist or that table doesn't exist anymore. That's why it's like, well, the LLM's not going to know that. And until you build it into your graph, for, you know, if you're doing something with HR and like, you know, inner department communications or something, it doesn't know those things, right? So that's where like adding in that business logic that is not just point blank in your data that you can derive, that's where this this becomes more special. Yeah, 100%.